so I'm going to ask um, Priyanka to join us on on screen to tell us about the Lao. Um, this, you know, today we're going to be uh, meandering through many different applications of decentralized um, uh, 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 protocols. Um, this one is really directed at investment funds. Um, and, you know, we, we all are familiar with investment funds, private equity, et cetera. And so this is another potential disruption, which is how do you sort of um, displace some of the functions of a of a management team on a on a on a investment fund through a protocol and um, and there's a project in New York called the Open Law Project, which Priyanka is part of, which is using smart contracts to do lots of things like this. So I'll I'll let Priyanka tell us more about that. Thank you so much, Howard, and thanks for having me. Um, I have a little presentation, so I'm going to uh, square, uh, share my screen here, if that's okay with you. Um, so. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Priyanka. I lead operations for a project called Open Law, and we basically, uh, you know, put together something called DAOs or decentralized autonomous organization. Um, you know, DAOs can take on several different use cases. Uh, the Lao is really um, in the context of of you know venture capital and, and um, venture investing. Um, and so I'll kind of walk you through that and, and what that looks like um, and, and how we have squared that uh, with the current legal system as well. Um, so just to kind of, I guess, level set on, on you know, where we have been in, in, uh, in the path of organizations and where we're going. So, um, you know, we've had the industrial era build, you know, built out the joint stock company. You know, we have the railroad boon birth uh, preferred shares. and. And we also have this uh, growth in global finance, much of which has been fueled by um, this idea of limited liability companies, which I'm sure many of you are uh, familiar with. Uh, you know, in our in our view, um, DAOs are really going to push the outer edges of organization and and be the next frontier when it comes to digital internet internet based organizations. Um, you know, for Ethereum, this has been a, a actually, you know, Martin history to some regard, but, you know, in, in Ethereum, there was something called the Dow in 2016, which raised, I believe, up to 150 plus million in Ethereum. Um, you know, there was uh, some technical issues, to say the least, uh, with the Dow, but the fundamental idea of, and legal issues, uh, may, may I add there, um, uh, there was no real legal structuring around this organization, but basically people pooled capital together and the intent was to, you know, deploy that capital in the venture context through some sort of democratic means. Um, and, and really, uh, you know, the, the goal there was to, um, you know, basically used group human coordination um, in a very operationally efficient way using something called smart contracts and really kind of building out these DAOs and decentralized protocols using some of these smart contracts. And, and um, like I said, that did run into some technical issues um, at the time and in legal ones. And really what we're doing today with the Lao is taking the uh, smart contract um, uh, frameworks of Moloch DAO, which uh, I don't know if any of you guys are at all familiar, but um, the Moloch DAO smart contracts were launched in the spring of 2019, but basically uh, it was kind of a revival of, of this vision. Um, you know, our team extended them for the for-profit venture context, um, which basically, you know, made it such that this group could, you know, come together deploy capital and then whatever returns from that capital could be easily you know redistributed amongst the groups group based on their uh, respective interests in that DAO. Um, so we on the open law team um, realize that to really be uh, you know a force um, and to invest in companies and, and you know be a legitimate entity uh, you have to you know square with uh, US law so we kind of created the Lao, which is the vision of the original DAO that pulled together um, you know, various uh, capital from all over the world and have done something similar, except we've wrapped that in a limited liability company based in Delaware. All the members are accredited and that, you know, the vision still exists where these members come together with their various backgrounds. Some of them are protocol founders and operators. Some of, their, some of them are in the venture capital space. 
Um, you know, some of them, whether that be traditional VC or crypto VC, some of them are also just early people in the that have been supporting projects and on the ground floor Ethereum, you know, since day one. Um, and so the idea really there is to, to take all these people with, you know, different walks of life, different life experience, different interests, put them together, uh, coordinate together and, you know, see what the outcome, you know, comes out to when it comes to, uh, you know, getting some of the best project, supporting some of the best projects in the ecosystem. Um, and so that's been a pretty successful project so far. We launched that at the end of April, like I said, we've gathered, you know, people from all over the world with different backgrounds have um, since launch uh, supported about 36 different projects, um, everything from, you know, uh, DeFi that I'm sure you've heard a ton about today to uh, NFTs or digital art uh, related pat platform. There's also been support in like the social token space. Uh, basic, you know, blockchain infrastructures. So there's, you know, ev everyone, again, like I said, is, is um, from a different background. So the idea is this hive mind can come together, evaluate projects, diligence them, and then, you know, through a democratic vote, uh, deploy that capital. All through this limited liability entity that's operating with smart contracts and blockchain based, you know, systems from Malakdao um, as well. So, um, you know, this, you know, what we built with the Lao is specifically in the venture context. And, um, you know, there's there's DAOs and then there's Laos. DAOs is what I would describe as like the framework and, and blockchain based protocols. Um, you know, we have Moloch DAO and other decentralized applications. And then Laos are really that legal wrapper around that. So, you know, when you start tying um, uh, a legal wrap, wrapper around some of these frameworks, you can really start you know, thinking creatively on where they could go and having having them almost interact with uh, these real world touch points, which is, um, you know, critically important uh, when you're when you're, you know, trying to engage with the real world. So, um, you know, we've done this in the context of invest venture style investing. Um, we also uh, out of this vision of the Lao, many of the members were very supportive of uh, the digital art NFT space and created another structure called Flamingo, which is specifically for um, uh, support of NFT. So purchasing digital art, uh, metaverse assets and, and the like. So the idea is that these LAOs can really extend beyond just venture. But, um, you know, right now we, we are being very thoughtful on like which verticals these could go in. But I think, you know, eventually we're going to see a proliferation of LAOs in all different you know, um, uh, industries, whether that be insurance, media, um, and other other services. And I just, I really like this analogy. Um, I, th I think it's helpful to understand where Laos fit in, kind of just going off the last slide there. Um, so Laos, uh, I, I think this is a uh, kind of what Coinbase had, had done with Mt. Gox. So Mt. Gox was, uh, you know, talked about quite a bit in the industry. Mt. Gox um, had clear product market fit and that there was, you know, supply and demand and a, a real uh, desire for people to want to go to some sort of exchange and purchase digital assets. Uh, but it was definitely the wild west of it. So uh, to say the least. And I think, um, you know, Coinbase came and they saw what was going on with Mt. Gox, felt like, you know, there, there's something that definitely here, but why don't we do this in the context of the law, the right way, kind of make sure things are done in, in, in a thoughtful manner. And, and we're trying to do something similar here with DAOs. So we have the original DAOs I sort of touched upon earlier where people pulled capital together, but there was no legal structuring and, and it seemed like it was a little too early on the tech side. Um, you know, now with the more mature tech stack and having a limited liability wrapper around it, we can actually bring these uh, blockchain based organizations into the real world and have them interact in, in a way that's frictionless, but also compliant. And this is an overview of what our, our structure looks like here. Um, so as I mentioned, the, the Lao is organized in Delaware. Um, we had a, a sale for whoever was accredited and, and qualified to join. Um, you, you, know, you could just follow through with your accreditation materials, contribute the respective ETH, and then join the um, lab. So the way the coordination and conversation operates is through a Discord channel. There's weekly calls where people dive in on the specific project. Um, and all of the decision-making 
and all that is is uh, all entirely member managed. So you know, as Open Law and my team, we just simply kind of herd cats and make sure everything runs. But all of the investment decisions are um, entirely you know done through member vote, um, and those votes are all done through a smart contract. So a project will apply. Um, that project that project proposal will go up to vote. The members all vote, and then um, you know if that if that vote uh, passes in favor to fund that project, the capital or ETH gets deployed in this context, and then you know legal documents are signed, and then that that project then is a member of the Lao portfolio. And so this is um, a little bit more in depth on the structure. So as Open Law, we are the administrator. Uh, there's 100 members and all these little unicorn he, unicorns here are um, the projects of, of the lab. Um, and, and I would like to add for those who are curious, it, it's not, um, you know, the, the software provider administrator, you know, this is very different in that. And when I say member manage, uh, there is no general partner in this kind of structure. So, um, you know, unlike a typical venture style fund where there's an LP GP relationship that just doesn't exist here, the members all uh, run the show here and we simply kind of help with the software and take a small fee for helping that but there is no carry or anything like that this is you know very investor friendly in that they because they make all the dis investment decisions they really get to get to um, you know receive all the uh, contribution for for their decision making and I touched on this a little bit but and this is kind of an interesting concept, um, really speaks to the smart contract side of things here. So, uh, you know, members have a lot of control on what happens, any uh, governance decisions or anything like that. Um, but uh, they also, you know, if, if they're not necessarily happy with the thing, way things are running or they just, you know, don't feel like they want to be a member anymore, it's kind of fluid in, in many ways. So if a member would like to uh, what we kind of coin as rage quit or leave the fund, they can take any undeployed capital with them, someone else can take their spot and it's a very kind of fluid um, uh, a way to operate. So it's, it's different again in, in that context as well. So um, like I said, the projects are, this is, you know, the, the investment amounts are really ranging at this point, but they've been anywhere from 25,000 to 250,000. Um, you know, unlike, uh, I, I think, Many um, venture style investments, all of the all of the investments are made at ETH, um, and you know there's a strong preference to really support uh, these protocols that are early on that want to decentralize themselves and have some sort of token as well. Uh, and there's also like quite a bit of a uh, 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 there's this ability to move quickly because people are very entrenched in using protocols as well. Um, and what's really great about something like this is, you know, I kind of liken it, although there's a lot, you know, going on with what happened with uh, GameStop, it's almost like a coordination tool. It's really built in community. It's generated by community. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of desire to do these DAO to DAO transactions, meaning you can literally tie yourself to another DAO. Like, for example, uh, the Lao uh, wanted to contribute directly to another DAO, built, you know, the smart contracts to be able to do that. And so it's kind of um, interesting in that it's it's you know quick. You can really interact with other decentralized organizations, and it's a bit unique in that way. I would say compared to what we've seen in you know the exist existing corporate landscape. Hey Priyanka, can I just jump in and ask you a quick question because we're yeah. kind of running out of time? Yeah. Um, so you know, obviously we've been talking about deconstructing various lines of business and traditional institutions through DeFi and through um, protocols. So you are effectively disrupting potentially the uh, investment fund or venture capital industry or venture funds. Um, but obviously, you know, there are a lot of functions that I think people in venture capital say it can't be replaced by algorithms. Uh, but obviously there are some functions that could be. What, how, how do you think about what parts of venture capital can be replaced by a protocol and what cannot? What, what will you displace over time? Um. So, so, I mean, I think that, you know, a lot of the operational efficiencies um, kind of go away with something like allow structure. Um, you know, we, the, the members um, kind of run the show, they can, um, you know, propose a governance proposal to change things. Um, so I think from that vantage point, as far as like the fun, funding decisions, that tends to move a lot faster. 
Um, I think when you have different minds at play, it you know you have that swarm mentality, kind of what we saw at Wall Street bets, but in the venture context where people knew what they wanted and and they were interested in the space, saw a clear need for it. You don't have that same kind of um, uh, you know uh, necessary bureaucracy that comes into whether or not you should fund it. Uh, on the legal side of things, like you know we haven't there hasn't been like a leading of rounds yet, but. Uh, if you, you know, the ability to kind of streamline some of the legal processes there also uh, is something that uh, I think Laos will be eventually be able to do. Um, so, I mean, I think there's, you know, uh, I also think this idea of voting on which projects is also kind of a, a nice, you know, difference. It's not about uh, who is what, who is where in what um, area of the fund. It's just all kind of flat. Uh, it's really just based on your, you know, initial contribution amount, and and it, and everyone, no one has a, an overwhelming say on anything, um, and it brings in different deal flow from all over the world. It's pretty democratic. If you look at the the uh, portfolio companies, they're literally almost on every single continent. Um, so I think having exposure to all of these different regions and projects is pretty unique as well. Um, so I mean, there's definitely a few kind of small things I think would that are, are a little bit different and um, I, you know that's not to say that that traditional venture won't have a place or, or, or a general partner won't have a place I think for many that that is you know very um, important but there's some level of activity here where I think when you have people come together um, great things can happen. It's almost in many ways like taking a Reddit community and, and giving it a level of capital and then deploying that based on what that community wants to do. Great. Well, we're, we're almost out of time here. So do you, do you have anything, last things you want to say, Priyanka, before we? Um, no, I mean, I think I think it's what we're doing with the Lao is really uh, powerful stuff. I think, um, you know, if, if this is of interest for you, I'm happy to carry on the conversation. But um, you know, the Lao, the Lao is definitely in the venture context, but what we've done with Flamingo is also pretty fascinating. You can almost think about that as like an art fund, but also like a, a auction house mixed with masterworks. I think there's a lot of experimentation that happens within these DAOs um, beyond just, let's say, venture financing or buying an NFT. Um, so there's, there's, you know, things inside of these things that where a lot of the members will discuss and turns into a larger thing. So I think, um, you know, we're kind of at the beginning of this a bit like community driven finance. And um, um, I, 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 I encourage you guys all to read up and, and ask any questions. So um, yeah, if you if you want anything, please feel free to email uh, or if you have any questions, uh, email at pre at openlaw.io. Or join you on get on the on the Slack channel, hopefully. Yes, yes, that too. Okay. Thank you very much, Priyanka. Thank you.